All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you the difference between high carbon steel and mild steel. So I got high carbon steel on the left, mild steel on the right. They are of the same thickness. They're roughly, I believe around 14 gauge. Now, I've been getting a bunch of comments on my ring videos that I have on my channel uh, that when I quench the either nut steel nut that I'm indeed hardening it and I'm also getting some comments on coin videos where if I quench the coin in water I am hardening it um, which typically if it's an American quarter it is actually made out of uh, a non-ferrous material which you cannot harden by quenching so I'm going to show you the difference right here and put that to bed. Um, I'm going to heat these both up with a torch, quench them in water, then I'm going to try bending them, and then I'm going to try cutting them or running a file on them, and you'll be able to see the difference, the stark difference between the two. It would be awesome if you could harden mild steel, because then I wouldn't have to search for... Um, high carbon steel for making springs or making knives something that needs to be hardened so it can hold an edge or so it can actually be springy when you heat treat it properly depending on your application so let's try this first up mild steel Okay, that's mild steel. I'm going to put that aside. Now I'm going to do high carbon steel. So here are the two pieces of steel. I'm going to clamp in the vise the mild steel first. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my file. i got a file right here with a sharp tip on it. I'm going to scratch it. And see how it digs in? It digs right in with ease. See, it's even peeling up some of the steel. No problem at all. This is the high carbon steel. Sk skates over the metal. If I work at it long enough, it'll just ruin my file probably. But see, skates over it. back to the mild steel now. Bend test. I've heated this part of it right here. If I bend this, if I pull on this, or I should say apply a force on this, this should bend. And look, it bends. No problem. Super malleable. I'm bending this with my hand. Not an issue. Okay, mild steel. Come back to the high carbon steel. I'm hitting it. Doesn't bend. Snaps. That is because it was hardened. So this was the high carbon steel that snapped. I'm going to take the other piece. I'm just going to heat it, let it cool on its own and show you that this wasn't some magical steel that was different, um, that uh, it indeed will bend. All right, so it's cooled. I'm gonna take my pliers 
and then as you can see, instead of snapping this time, it bends. All day. And then this piece up here, where it actually kind of got tempered, is actually kind of become springy now, depending on how you temper the steel after heat treating, because this part up here originally I had heated and then snapped off. But because I had heated up to about here, this here didn't get up to the point where the, I forget the, the terminology of the of the crystallization of the steel, but uh, it it hasn't fully converted to the to the material that is full, to the I guess the substance is it marcinite? I forget exactly. Anyways, if you Wikipedia, it's in there. So it's remained springy here. So I can't really bend it, and it, but it's not snapping. So you consider that spring steel or tempered. But this part here is fully malleable. So I hope this video has helped clear up the differences between mild steel and high carbon steel. Typically nuts that I'm using to make rings out of are made out of mild steel. So if I heat it and then quench it, all I'm doing is speeding up the process of cooling it down. I am not hardening it whatsoever. So this can be applied to any type of steel, particularly um, it steel has iron in it, meaning it's ferrous as opposed to non-ferrous metals that also you cannot harden by quenching. You can work harden some of them, but you can't um, heat them up and then quench them and expect them to harden.